Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Wilhelmina Fleming and her contributions to astronomy. So let's take a look at what she's done. Well, first of all, she was born in 1857 and lived it until 1911. She was born in Scotland. Now, different from some of the others is that her family was not involved in astronomy at all. So we've seen that with a lot of a lot of the women we've talked about so far. There was a family tie for the for them working in astronomy. Here is a case where we did not have that. And in fact, she was a single mother who worked at the home of Edward Pickering. Now, Edward Pickering was the director at the time of the Harvard College Observatory. And he hired Wilhelmina Fleming as well as other women to help in the observatory to help work and do calculations specifically in the observatory there. And what they were sometimes called was the Harvard computers. And that meant that they did a lot of the calculations and a lot of the detail work that was needed. So in 1881, she was she learned how to classify the spectra of stars. So a spectrum, we split the star into its component color, colors of lights. And the spectras tell us different things about the stars. In fact, we'll eventually use them to learn the compositions of the stars. And she worked on this and classified many stars and in fact worked on what is now called the Henry Draper catalog or HD catalog of stars in the sky. So we have all of the different stars and by just looking at a small spectrum, these women were able to very accurately get a classification. Now Wilhelmina Fleming started to develop a system to classify the stellar spectra. Now her classification was based on the strength of the hydrogen lines. We have to think at this time we did not know what stars were made of. So now we know stars are mostly hydrogen. At this time we didn't know that. We knew that they had some hydrogen because we could see hydrogen lines. Some had very strong hydrogen lines. Some had very weak hydrogen lines. And what she did was develop a classification system using the alphabet. So those stars with the very strongest hydrogen lines are class A. The next were B, C, and so on. This is actually the foundation of the classification system that we use today. This was the beginnings of it. It's changed as we've had understanding and we'll see that coming up in future discussions here. But what what happens is that yes, the A stars and in fact, the A classification is still used within our current classification as is B. Those are stars with very strong hydrogen lines in them and you can hardly see anything else because of the prominence of those hydrogen lines. So it's the basis of the classification and we'll see another of our women in astronomy coming up who actually modified this and made it a little more have a little more physical meaning because we'll eventually find that it's really based the strength of those hydrogen lines is based on temperature. And she also discovered many nebulae. Uh, and variable stars. Now here we see the Horsehead Nebula. This would not be an image that she took. This is a much more modern Hubble image, but an example of a type of nebulae that Wilhelmina Fleming discovered. So nebulae and variable stars and actually is known for the discovery of the very first white dwarf star, a compact remnant of a star left over after the end of the life of a star much like our own sun. Now, Wilhelmina Fleming died in 1911 then at the age of 54. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And what we've looked at this time is that Wilhelmina Fleming, born in Scotland in 1857, and developed the basic foundation of our modern system of stellar classification. In addition, she discovered new nebulae, variable stars, and the very first white dwarf star. So that concludes this discussion on Wilhelmina Fleming. We'll be back again next week to talk about another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.